Cheers. Uh, thanks very much. I'm doing this um, 10 minutes in uh, collaboration with uh, Alison Anderson from ISSR here, looking at climate science in the media. So my background is, as a journalist, I was a BBC science and environment correspondent for, well, more years than I care to remember, um, and recently set up the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit with a view to sort of trying to um, influence the kind of debate, the quality of the debate that we have in the media here on these uh, very important questions. So uh, here are some of the sort of issues that learned academics like uh, Alison uh, research and debate. I'm, I'm not a, a, a learned academic, I'm a practitioner, so I come at it from a rather different point of view, but I'm always interested to, uh, to, to read and follow this. And you know, th these questions, how much do we actually know about the news chain? Uh, how does it work in the context of climate change? And what should be the right role of the media in reporting climate science? These are definitely issues of academic inquiry that I think have increased in recent years and are very interesting. And <clears throat> what can scientists do to ensure that coverage is good? That's obviously, I, I guess there are some people in the room who might well have an interest uh, in that. And as I say, I approach this very much from a practitioner's uh, point of view. And uh, I'm slightly frustrated by what sometimes is a sort of dialogue of the deaf between scientists on one hand and the, and the media on the other hand. So rather than giving you, attempting to sort of give you um, an academic view of this, this is a kind of inside journalist's view of how the media works and why it's difficult to get climate science across uh, in the media. So here's a question. I mean, perhaps you put your hands up. How many of you would say that you value the editorial independence of a free press? How much is this something you like in society? That's what I thought would happen. And here's a rather difficult second question then. If you want the press to have its freedom, it's a bit difficult to complain when they exercise that freedom. It's a weird thing about newspaper journalism. It really has virtually no rules. As long as you don't libel people, you don't, you know, you're not in contempt of court, you don't practice insider trading. There are basically no rules. Anything goes. You don't have to be right. It is the market that sets the, uh, the agenda. And, or well, let's say the parameters, determines what journalism succeeds and fails. And climate science is just another subject. Editors don't treat it differently from, from fires, from government health policy, from uh, the latest thing that a celebrity has said. It's just another bit of news. Uh, and journalism is not, in this country, in a massively good state at the moment. Um, there are cuts. There's juniorisation, there's the increasing demands of 24-hour news. So less and less time uh, to do more and more, uh, declining working conditions, so less and less specialism. News, you know, some journalists having to do, you know, I've come across one example of a, a journalist who had 10 articles to do in a day. I mean, how the hell are you supposed to do any proper research in this? I, I don't know. Um, Controversy sells, so hence there's always desire for another view rather than just sort of taking the, the view of science. So it's, it's quite tough out there in the media world, even, the, even for those journalists who want to do it properly. And this is, this is normal journalism. Journalists ask simple questions. You know, what's going on? When did it happen? Who's involved? And this would be a, a, a kind of story that works very well for journalists. It's a house fire, so what's gone on? We know there are characters in that firemen, people being rescued, people who may not have been rescued, you know where it is, and you know, maybe in a street that's like your street. So there's an immediacy to it. When did it happen? We know that. Why did it happen? There are questions to be asked. That's the kind of thing that journalists find very easy to do. It sort of works for them. We ask those same questions around climate science in the media. You end up with answers that are difficult from a journalist's point of view. You know, the IPCC report, what's it going to say? Well, we've heard it all before. Who are these guys? None of them are famous. None of them, you know, have a million Twitter followers and so on. Um, well, when are the impacts? Sometime in the future. This is tough stuff for journalists to deal with. Um, so just a few tips that I could give on sort of working well with journalists. So this is not a, you know, comprehensive user's guide, but um, make sure you've actually got something to say that's concrete. You test it. Test it with someone who's not in your office, maybe someone that you know who works in a different field. <coughs> See if you can explain it. If, if, does it work? Does it work as a story? Is it saying something that is actually, you know, that people outside your bubble are going to listen to? You know, respect the trade. Journalists have schedules, they have pressures, they have deadlines. Make sure that you're communicating with them in a way that works. 
Um, simple ways to, 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 to find analogies for what you're, what you're saying is good. Normal storytelling is good. You know, there are goodies in this, there are baddies in this, there is drama. You're a human being as well as the person who comes in and works at your computer in your narrow academic field. So what do you feel about things? Um, and they're not, you know, journalists are not people to be lectured at. They're kind of, I'm not sure I'd call journalism a profession, but it's certainly a trade. And I think, you know, they need to be respected as that. And get to know the reporters. The better you know individual reporters, the better you'll be able to talk to them in language that makes sense to them. Um, and just, uh, I, I debated a little bit before showing you this, but uh, when I was at the BBC, this is the, um, the climate science story that I had, uh, that had most readers. <laughs> and it is an utterly genuine climate science story. So I'm not sure quite what the message is there. Triviality works, perhaps. Anyway, Alison knows far more about the academic side of things than I do, so I'll hand over to you, Alison. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I'm just going to finish off by uh, just saying a few words about some of the research challenges. I started out uh, looking at uh, some of the issues around communicating environmental issues back in the late 1980s, and at the time, uh, newspapers and, and television news was talking about the greenhouse effect, about the ozone layer. I think one of the first headlines that came out was um, Charles Band's uh, dyes hairspray. Um, and things have moved on incredibly since those early days in the late 1980s when um, environmental issues moved up the political agenda. Um, and if you have a look on the stand outside uh, for the Centre for Culture, Community and Society, you can see there's a special issue there looking at climate change in the media of the journal Environmental Communication. And that shows you know, how much research is going on now looking at how climate change issues are being covered uh, within the media. However, most of the research to date has focused on national media and uh, predominantly the US and uh, the UK, although things are changing now, fortunately, there are beginning to be far more studies carried out of non-Western countries. If you look, for example, at the work of somebody called James Painter, um, who's based at the Reuters Institute of Journalism at Oxford <coughs> University. So things are changing. Um, but my particular interest, and I'm sorry, there's a plug for my book here. I had to get it in somewhere. Um, was my particular interest is in the media politics of climate change. And I think as important as it is to look at how much coverage there is of climate change in the media, not only do we need to do that, we also need to look at what goes on behind the scenes um, to consider uh, the kind of strategies that different news sources are using, whether they're NGOs, climate scientists, um, or other um, claims makers, and to find out what works best. Um, and still, we find that environmental issues generally only um, account for a very small proportion of overall news coverage. There's far more interest, as we know, in celebrities, in crime, um, and relatively little coverage of climate change, apart from particular um, points that we can all um, identify. Now, most research, as I mentioned, has focused on the national media, and I think a really significant gap in research is in terms of looking at regional media, which often get overlooked. And the whole nature of regional media coverage is changing because of the role of uh, digital media and so on, but they are still really, really important. Um, how many people remember seeing this kind of image um, in the early part of last year of the Dawlish railway line um, and uh, you know, the coverage around that, that generated in terms of um, <coughs> the flooding and there was more coverage of climate science, even though obviously we have to be a bit careful with some extreme weather events, we can't always link them to, to climate change, but nevertheless, um, there's a real opportunity there, I think, to get climate science stories into the media and for climate scientists to get more coverage because what we know from research is that people often tend to perceive climate change as something that's very abstract, it's distant, it's not meaningful to them, um, and it really brings it home where there's something they personally experience, um, you know, as with the, the floods last year. 
Um, so I think this is one of the, the biggest areas of, of challenge, looking ahead to, to the future, um, to look at the role of local media in covering climate change science and to improve the nature of, of climate science coverage.